Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we are going to take a close look at the new DR35 Plus Edition. And I already reviewed the normal, and I was very intrigued to see that this thing came out with very, let's say, some interesting specifications. So first of all, this thing comes with a display 3.5 inch and IPS panel with a resolution of 640 by 480. But let's do a quick, let's say, zoom in, and let's just do a chit chat about this. <laughs> so the ARM Gore-Tex A7, and yeah, this is absolutely not like super spectacular when it comes to, let's say, the one gigabyte of RAM. Yeah, memory is eight gigabytes uh, when it comes to the storage capacity, and we're having 3000 milliamp, let's say, lithium ion polymer battery. So there comes this nice specification that we have seen before with different handhelds. But how about the overall performance and what can we do? So they went for a different approach with this device as it was going to be released. It comes in different kind of, let's say colors, not variations when it comes to controls. Some of the handheld manufacturers do have some options there. So over here we're finding different kind of colors. I went for the translucent or translucent-ish, let's say purple version, but you do have like all kinds of versions, including the gray retro, let's say Super NES version. So different kind of sizes, and yeah, when it comes to, let's say, the performance, this is quite interesting, because when you're going to be booting up, this is more like an handheld that you can pick up and just play with a very basic menu. And I mean particularly when it comes to, say, the way how it will work, I will showcase later on. So but let's do a chit-chat about the controls and everything else. The first thing I've noticed that this thing has absolutely huge buttons. I've seen it with the D007 was also one of those handhelds. And yeah, when you're touching it, it is, does have like a very nice touch to it. Do have like a little bit of a wiggle feel to it. And the travel is quite long. But what I love about this is when you're going to be actually holding it, it feels very comfortable. And that has simply to do of the size and also when it comes to the way how they are shaped. The feel itself is absolutely amazing. We do have two joysticks, both are like Nintendo Switch clone joystick without the click. Yeah, they're just in different lighting like, configurations. It's kind of interesting they went for this one without the click. You do feel something, but there is no micro hitch underneath. Select and start and over here, menu button. And the menu button, this is something you do see with a lot of handhelds nowadays. But the configuration is slightly different because when it comes to pressing this, it will be giving you like the, the quick load menu I'm going to be showing you later on too. Okay, so another thing that's quite interesting is the D-pad itself. The D-pad is absolutely huge. It's just, man, it's something completely different. And the feel itself, I can tell you, it's very strange, but it is very responsive. But the first thing I'm going to do is testing out the D-pad with some Street Fighter. And I've noticed that the D-pad, you really need to get used to it. But when you're getting the hang of the touch, it is a very responsive D-pad. So I think it's absolutely great because this is one of the games I play, play just most of the time. So D-pad wise for fighting games, this thing is absolutely great. But how about if you're going to be playing games like Contra? So that is one of the other tests I just love to do. And you can just see if you want to shoot in a certain direction, the diagonals are absolutely amazing when it comes to the D-pad too. So also when it comes to fighting games or games like Contra or beat-em-ups, the D-pad is absolutely a good one. It also has a very tiny curve into it. And what I love about it is that it feels very nice when it comes for playing. And when you're looking at the general performance of the D-pad, I'm very pleased with it. The translucent case is quite interesting too, because this is not like 100% see-through or translucent. It's more like this smokish, I don't know exactly how to say it. You can see through it, but it is not the same that we have seen before with different devices. In here we're finding some more information. This calls is SZDYYER. The model number is a D35S Plus Edition. Overall, like it comes with a 3000 mAh battery and oh by the way, this thing is also gigantic when you look at it. You can remove it and that's absolutely one of those improvements I'm guessing they made. But later on we're going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison. But getting out of it, oh man, getting it out is going to be very difficult. And in particular when it comes like how like it squeezes in. It looks like a very strange package. It also comes here with some information. So if you need to find replacement, I'm guessing you can find them throughout, let's say the manufacturer of the device itself. But the day absolutely great with this is that we can remove it fairly easy by plugging this thing out and you can just get yourself a new battery and replace it fairly easy. But how about the back buttons? I do have like a mixed feeling because I'm not the biggest fan of this, let's say form factor in combination with the back buttons. I mean, when you're looking at it from the angle or the side, you can see they put some different, like say height in it. And when you're going to be holding this thing, it's absolutely nice to basically 
touch the L2 and R2, but I find it quite difficult to touch the side ones over here. There can be maybe to do with my hands of the size, but I think it's not like an overall very comfortable, let's say overall situation. Another thing I also changed out, if you're going to be pressing it, you need to press it really hard because underneath we're just directly pushing it into the micro switch. And the resistance of these are quite big. And to be honest, that makes it less comfortable to play. Personally, yeah, it gives me just a membrane between it, like the, let's say the button and the micro switch or in different configurations. So we have this very nice touch. And there's a little bit of a downside too. One thing I'm always glad to see is that we're having a physical volume button over here. You can also do it software-wise, but also it's very interesting to see that we have like this option for it. And USB-C for charging, we're having over here the 64 gigabyte SD card. And again, a non-branded. So I really hate these things. They are low quality most of the time. And a headphone jack out. But what you can just actually see, there is no HDMI out. So that is quite unfortunate. But let's power it on by holding the button a couple of seconds. And I don't see any reset. Firing on, it will showcase the D35S, or sorry, the DR35 Plus, and will automatically boot up in a menu. But the software in a menu, that is quite interesting because they went for a completely different approach. So let's talk about that. Okay, so let's do a chit chat about the menu. So when you're pressing the middle button over here, it will give you the special menu, I love to call it. Exit, make and quick load and quick save. And we do have the option for going into the menu for changing out the controls if needed. But let's take a close look at the menu itself and this is a different approach where the previous version had so much more option. This is more for if you just want to buy something and you just want to play, you can just pick it up and just play. There is not a lot of configuration going on, so the only thing you can actually do is going all the way to the back and going to the settings. You're having less played, we're having the menu with previews, not even the movie, just a picture. I think favorites, then over here I think search. So that's one of those options. Like always, let's search for Sonic and let's see how fast it will respond. You can see that it almost instantly loads. Do uh, that absolutely? Oh crap! That nothing. Let's say of a problem there. Uh, let's see if I can choose the C and let's go enter. And in here we're finding all of the different games. In the middle we will showcase over there what kind of platform: Super Famicom, Famicom Game of Advance. And that seems to be working all fine. Okay, so pressing start over here will only getting you into let's say, the game list. And that's actually it. We're having the download for where you can add in your own games. And having the settings. And with settings, it's quite disappointing. Because you can change out the volume. And the tiny front speaker goes quite low. But the overall quality is okay. I didn't find so far any let's say, situation going on when it comes to let's say, adjusting the brightness. So it's... Quite disappointing, but also very limited. Restore factory settings, that's it. And that's the only thing. But also when it comes to the systems, 8-bit, 16-bit handhelds, even PlayStation. But there is even not Logan CPS 3, no Dreamcast, no Sega Saturn. So that's a little bit of a disappointing situation. But the first thing I'm just going to be, let's go for the, let's say the craziest thing. Let's check out some PlayStation and let's see how that actually works out because those systems are quite difficult to emulate. Yeah, unfortunate, they're also going to be removing the background music to save up space. Chariots on Fire 2, that's what I call Twisted Metal. Okay, but the reason I wanted to boot that up is very, it's just a simple reason. That's going to be configuring options are like having none of them. So if the audio itself is not good, you do have not just a general problem. So over here having the load state, I made one earlier just to see if it's going to be loading up. You can see it takes a couple of seconds to load up. Okay, well now we can just get into the game and the loading situation works great. There's also a great game to test out the D-pad because you need to navigate and accelerate if you want to. You guys have like a different configuration going on. So shooting is very easy to touch because thanks of the let's say right different height of the shoulder buttons but yeah when you're going to be using the side ones you can press them but everything seems to be working just fine let's see if it's special you can switch between the weapons and everything works quite nice and also comes with the volume itself going back to the menu we can go all the way back and you can just see how fast it all loads up so when it comes to the overall, let's say, software and how it works, it's very limited, but it works quite nice. 
The unfortunate thing is when it comes to, let's say, games like Contra, where we need to have a different like, SPS ratio, they didn't implement this, so we're going to be here the widescreen shenanigans all the way. So that's quite unfortunate when it comes to games like this. And the overall emulation performance do have like stuttering, so that is not going to be an overall great experience. And that is quite unfortunate because those games are just a lot of fun to play and they can run on a freaking potato nowadays. Ugh. Okay, so let's move on to some other games of MAME and I can tell you that it was just a single game that didn't run great. Because getting into some other games, they run amazing. I already told you before that the the D-pad, you really need to get used to it. It's not the best D-pad I've ever seen, but I don't have any problems getting into some Street Fighter with this. It's absolutely amazing. Just great. The display of this thing looks is just stunning with this beautiful, let's say, IPS panel. And the resolution of this thing is just great. Making a quick load, quick save is so easy to do. You can see it made automatically goes back to the game. But somehow when you're getting into the Genesis, it's going to be a hit or miss. I've noticed like also with MAME that we have some games that didn't run correctly. You can just hear that the audio, it's not like it should be. It's just stuttering all the freaking time. The control is going to be kind of weird because we're using a different configuration when it comes to, let's say, the controllers. I can understand that some of the, I think it was the Super Nintendo controller was one of the best ones to play this game. But where the music is, sounds kind of weird. The overall emulation performance seems to be just running fine. But when it comes to, let's say, the software itself, there's absolutely an there's absolutely room for improvement over here. I wouldn't be surprised if this product is being on the market for some time. There's going to be coming in custom firmware or let's say an updated version of this. But let's move on to some more 16-bit with the Super Nintendo. And you can just see this is absolutely great overall emulation performance. But if you never tried this game before, this game is so much fun. Wild Guns, what an hated gem this is. This is a more like a rip-off or like a clone of the Blood Bros from MAME. This is so such a cool game to play. And very difficult to get because it's a very expensive one too. But I think it's absolutely worth it. And the emulation performance seems to be working just fine over here. Okay, another system I just wanted to see how it actually works is the Famicom. Oh, but one of my favorite games, Adventure Island. So what it did is absolutely great that we have two buttons, or actually normally you have two buttons, but I think they used one for the turbo. I always love it that we're going to be implementing this because it's so much fun and also kind of cheesy <laughs> to just play like that. Okay, so let's check out which button or what. So this is a jumping, jumping. See, and that's kind of weird. So we're actually having only one for shooting my axis. Ah, there we go. So we can also use the back buttons. And the back buttons, I'm guessing, are also for the turbo. So we have six buttons that we can actually use. Okay, that's kind of weird. What I find kind of strange when you're looking at the menu itself. So for GBA, it's absolutely a mess. Look at this. Does this have to do with the numbering they're using? Like everything is just one big mess where like going to the NES. You can see that it's also a mess, but there is some like say silver lining when it comes to alphabetic order. Here we go, alphabetic order, no problem. But with the GBA, it's one hot mess. For that, we're going to be using the search function, what I've shown you before, because I want to play one of my favorite games, it's Sonic Advance. With Game of Advance, I am so disappointed. Because the emulation performance is similar to the Sega Genesis, it does have, it just have issues. I'm like, this is not necessary, where you can just hear the sound effects are just great. But I do wonder, like, how can you mess something like this up? There are so many devices that run great, but is nobody testing these devices before they're just releasing them to the public? It seems to be not, because... This is one of the many problems we have faced. Okay, so another system we just wanted to check out. And normally with the display that this is absolutely great. And those are like the Game Boy Classic games. But so far, so good. I don't see any weird thing going on. No weird thing going on with the emulation performance. You can just see how great this D-pad is for shmups and beat em ups because you can navigate through the, let's say, stage without any problem. 
It's absolutely an overall great experience. So another weird situation is like now we're in the Game Boy Color listing and you can just see all kinds of classic games that are meant for the Game Boy Classic. And I've also noticed that when getting into the Game Boy, you can just see this in Game Boy Color game. So when it comes to the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy list itself, it's one huge mess, man. Absolutely. But let's get into the PlayStation because that is a system. If you do have so many problems when it comes to, let's say, all kinds of, let's say, platforms, how will the PlayStation 1 run? So when it comes to, let's say, the save functionality, so what I understand of the internal save doesn't work whatsoever. So what you need to do is when you're going to be actually like getting into the game, you always make a save slot over there. And so far I didn't have any issues. And the, you know, for PlayStation, this keep, takes up a couple of seconds for loading up and saving. But beside that, it works just fine. But so far, I can just see in here, there is no background music like always. They just keep removing them. The loading times are just fast, but also when it comes to the overall emulation performance, I don't see any problem here. And that is the thing, I found such a disappointment where we have like PlayStation 1 that is the most difficult one to emulate. That is a no problem whatsoever, but we're getting into, let's say, a Game Boy Advance. We have every single game that like, stutters like crazy. And that is quite unfortunate. So I already showcased that we do have a quick load, quick save. So let's see how that actually works. So we have all kinds of different games that we can add and play. So PlayStation 1, this is a great handheld for that. <laughs> I was thinking that's going to be point blank something like two, but no. The list is long. We don't have Bloody War 2. So that's quite unfortunate, but let's get into the the chariots on fire too. Okay, so you see the loading times are quite fast, but let's get into the load. We don't need to wait for it actually to boot up the game. We just press the load and bam, there we go. And yeah, I already mentioned before the D-pad of this thing is great. What I also love about the D-pad is that it's quite big, so it's easy to navigate. If they add like music to this, it would be even an overall better experience, but so far so good. And emulation is great on this. Did you know there were cheat codes or kind of in cheat codes in the like Twitter metal? If you're going to be pressing red left up, you can just choose a rocket. You have this meter over there. And I think it was left right up, having like the, the ice beam. <laughs> cool. So you have like free stuff that you can shoot if your meter is going to have enough energy. I think it was even like an ultimate cheat mode for completely 100% restoring your health and stuff like that. So the overall experience when it comes to the menu and how it works, this is just like easy like it's the way how it works it works quite well but the unfortunate part is that the over emulation we did have a lot of problems when it comes to some of the systems we can deep dive into it for example choosing some neo geo getting into some gaming of some metal slug but so what it is it's going to be in here or miss there we go putting in the credit and where we had some issues with some of the platforms neo geo seems to be just seems to be working fine we can use the analog stick for the people wonders about that. So we do have, you can see you pressing select, so it will give you the menu, but I think there is no, let's say getting into the UniBios and also with MAME. So it's also very limited when it comes to let's say, the overall software, but yeah, let's do a quick teardown. When it comes to, let's say the, the new Geo, that part seems to be running fine. Oh, another thing before I forgetting, if you want to shut it down, there is no standby mode. Just shut it down from every part of the let's say software. We don't need to go back to the main menu and that kind of stuff. But let's do a quick teardown and let's do a peek in the inside. The unfortunate part is that I can't open it up, and this has to do because of not having the right tools. I have so many screwdrivers, like a kind of different kits I've bought from AliExpress, but somehow this particular thing doesn't fit. And this has to do of let's say the configuration of my like bits that I'm going to be putting in there. That's quite unfortunate because I wish I could open it up and give you a look in the inside, where we do have some idea of how it is. And yeah, we've shown you that you can remove the battery, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And maybe we can revisit it when I'm having the right tools. Let me know in the comments, do you want to see a full teardown? All right, so this is what we're getting when it comes to the V35 Plus Edition. It comes also with a USB-C cable and the toilet paper metal. We didn't discuss that at all in this video, 
But the reason why, because there is nothing much to say. You can just see that this is just a basic manual with showcasing how the combination key description is. But yeah, that's it. There's not a lot of information and that's quite unfortunate. The device itself, I can tell you, it is kind of a disappointment. What I love about this thing, that this is a plug and play situation when it comes to the menu. So if you just want to pick something up and you just want to play, yeah, a lot of stuff does work. For example, PlayStation 1. But we did have a lot of problems when it comes to some MAME, where Neo Geo seems to be working fine, where MAME we have problems and GBA. And that's quite unfortunate, unfortunate because the Game Boy Advance is one of those systems that is absolutely fun to play. Removable battery, so this thing does have like some positive sides to it, but it also comes with a lot of problems. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it would be great to see you in the next video. Mm.